Hello, I'm Dr. Heiner. If you're watching this movie, it's because you're interested in a vasectomy or information about vasectomies. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that on this video clip. And I invite you to pick up a pen and a piece of paper and write down any questions that come up as the movie progresses. Feel free to pause the movie and, uh, and write down your questions so you don't forget. Vasectomy is a form of birth control that should be considered permanent. The vas deferens is a tube that carries the sperm from the testicles where they're produced into the prostate and reproductive tract, uh, which is what we use to ejaculate the sperm and the semen and the sperm that swim in it uh, and fertilize uh, a woman's eggs. A vasectomy involves taking a piece of the vas deferens out, removing it, and therefore making it impossible for the sperm to get from the testicle to the rest of the reproductive tract. There is still semen produced and, and men don't notice any decrease in the volume of the semen that they ejaculate, but that ejaculate no longer has sperm in it, so a woman's eggs can no longer be fertilized. A vasectomy is an office procedure that takes about 15 minutes. The whole visit usually takes about 45 minutes. Um, what's involved is making a, a small incision in the front of the scrotum and after, after some anesthesia is applied and then pulling the vas deferens up to the level of the skin and removing a piece of it. I remove a section of the vas deferens and then I cauterize or burn the insides of, the, of either end of the vas deferens that's left and then also the butt ends of the vas deferens and then I sew the sheath of the vas over one of the ends and leave the other end sticking out in the hopes of preventing mother nature from healing the vasectomy. Uh, and about one in a thousand vasectomies will fail, meaning that the, uh, the, vas deferen, the ends of the vas deferens grow back and the sperm are able to get out again. So one important point of a vasectomy is that you are still fertile after a vasectomy for several months because there are a lot of sperm downstream in the rest of the reproductive tract. And so one mistake people could make is after a vasectomy, they go back to unprotected intercourse too soon and could get pregnant despite the fact that they've already had a vasectomy. So what I have people do is a few months after their vasectomy, I have them submit a semen specimen to the laboratory. It is examined under, under the microscope to make sure that all the sperm are gone. If there's no more sperm left, then we send a letter that says no sperm seen, and that means you can consider yourself sterile. If we still see some sperm in there, then we will call you on the phone and tell you and ask you to wait another few weeks and submit another specimen because we want to confirm that all of the sperm are gone. And also, we want to let enough time pass by that if Mother Nature is going to heal, heal the vasectomy back, that, uh, that that's done before, before uh, we tell you that it's okay that you're sterile. Because if we have you submit a semen specimen too soon, there might be no uh, sperm in the semen, and you, so at that point you might be sterile, but if Mother Nature is in the process of healing things, uh, uh, six weeks or eight weeks later, it could be healed, and you could already have thought you're sterile, but there's sperm back in the semen. So it's important to, uh, to wait a few months before we check the semen, and it's also important that to be sexually active, the more you ejaculate, the more you'll clean out the pipes, so to speak, but you do have to consider yourself fertile still. So after a vasectomy, it's okay to be sexually active, that's good, but you need to take precautions so you don't get pregnant until a few months have gone by and we confirm that all of the sperm is gone from the semen. Um, the vasectomy should be considered permanent. The vasectomy can be reversed. Some people that have a vasectomy down the road, they, they, their plans change or their life situation changes. Uh, domestic situations or marriages could change and people could decide they want to have kids again so the vasectomy can be reversed and that requires an operation in the operating room that's usually successful but can be quite expensive. Um, what could go wrong with a vasectomy? Well the common complications from a vasectomy are what's called a hematoma or a blood collection. After the vasectomy is done there will be a few small stitches in the skin. They're the stitches that the kind that dissolve and fall out on their own so they don't have to be removed. But there really doesn't look like much has been done to the skin. However, underneath there are some wounds, there are some blood clots, there are some uh, scabs, so to speak, that are trying to form. And if one of those scabs gets knocked off, a vein or a blood vessel could bleed and cause a large collection of blood in the scrotum. 
That's called a hematoma. It can range in size from a small grape or a golf ball to as big as, say, a grapefruit. And it's usually not something that has to be drained or operated on. It's something that Mother Nature reabsorbs by herself after a while. But it could be several weeks, so you don't want to have a grapefruit walking around between your legs. Uh, you don't want to be walking around with a grapefruit between your legs. So that's a, the, what you can do to help prevent a hematoma is the first couple of days after a vasectomy to really take it easy. That means no strenuous activities or heavy lifting or getting constipated, things of that nature where you're straining. It doesn't mean you have to be bedridden or lay on the couch for a couple of days. It's okay to drive or run an errand or go pick up a movie or a pizza. But don't push the lawnmower in or do the work in the yard. Don't go push the grocery cart around the grocery store for an hour. Just give yourself a chance to relax. Um, if you do that, after a couple of days you can gradually increase your activities according to what you tolerate. Such that once a whole week's gone by, you could be back to physical activity or sexual activity. You still might be sore a week later if you jump on your mountain bike or your snowmobile or you go horseback riding. You might be sore, but you're probably not going to put yourself at increased risk for getting a hematoma. Other complications that are rare but could happen include uh, loss of a testicle. If the blood supply to the testicle on, on one side gets injured, that testicle could die. There's a risk of infection, but that risk is so low that we don't typically give people antibiotics. Um, unless they have another medical condition uh, for which they take antibiotics, such as they've been counseled to take an antibiotic before they go to the dentist or something. Um, some people, on rare occasions, will have a chronic pain or discomfort. Um, some people, will, th these people will say it feels like a dull ache or like they have blue balls. And that... Uh, can persist for months or even years and some people will have to get the vasectomy reversed uh, in order to make that discomfort go away. But that's rare enough that I've never had that happen to any of my patients. Um, and, uh, but it's a risk, so it's something you should be aware of. I think the best thing to do for the discomfort after a vasectomy is to take ibuprofen three times a day with some food. That's the medicine that's found in Motrin or Advil and you can take two or three of those tablets, which would be four or six hundred milligrams, three times a day with some food. And if you do that, it will really keep the swelling down and keep the, the, the discomfort down. The discomfort you can expect is more of a dull ache. Um, it's not really a sharp pain or like a, a, kick, in the nut, a kick in the nuts type pain. It's, it's, uh, and often people don't, there's many people don't have any discomfort or pain. I always give people a prescription for a, a narcotic pain medicine mixed with some Tylenol, so that's available to them if they need it, but the vast majority of patients don't take it. I also give patients a, Valium, a prescription for a Valium pill that they could take before they come if they like. But if you take the Valium pill, you have to have a driver bring you to the vasectomy and drive you home because it's not safe for you to drive uh, with an uh, altered level of alertness. You could get in an accident or injure yourself or someone or get a DUI. Um, so I think those are the main points is you're still fertile after your vasectomy for a while you need to take it easy for a few days afterwards and um, some ibu ibuprofen is probably the best medicine to take some people will also put an ice pack or a, a bag of frozen peas or frozen vegetables on the scrotum you can leave it on there for, uh, through, the, through the underclothing or through a dish towel I would put it right on the skin but you can leave it on there for 15 minutes at a time and 15 minutes off, and that can help decrease some of the swelling. It's common after a vasectomy to notice some bru what looks like bruising or purple discoloration along the front of the scrotum and the base of the penis. Um, as the blood clots that are inside dissolve, they will often make their way up to the surface of the skin and cause a tattooing or kind of a bruised color. And it looks like it should be really painful, but it, it, it's not sore or painful at all. Um, and in general, as, as the days progress after a vasectomy, you should be getting uh, more and more comfortable. If you do have fevers or, or uh, redness around your wound, or feeling worse and worse every day after the vasectomy, then you probably should come in to be examined. Um, I think that's all, really all I have to mention about the vasectomy. Uh, of course, we'll answer any questions that you might have. If you're watching this on the internet, uh, when you come into the office for your consult, your appointment, just let the nurse know that you've already seen this movie on the internet. Um, and uh, if you're watching this in the office,
go ahead and now that the movie's over, just open the door to the exam room so that we know your movie's finished. And as soon as I'm finished with the other patient that I'm seeing right now, I'll be right in to meet you. And we'll talk about your family. We'll do a brief examination to check uh, the man parts and make sure that we can do this procedure uh, easily and comfortably in the office. And if so, we'll answer any questions you might have. And um, if you like, make plans to, to pursue the vasectomy. So if you're in the office, go ahead and open that exam room door right now. And if you're watching this on the internet, when, you, when the nurse takes you back in, into the office, just let her know that you've already seen this movie so we don't make you watch it twice. Thanks.